What's up guys? Let's discover how to beat E4, E5. Oh, and I'm sure you face quite a lot in your games. It's the most common at the beginner level, at the club player level, at the online level, even at the super grandmaster level. So how do we deal with it? I'm not going to recommend move knight f3. That's the most common move. It's a move that your opponent is quite likely to expect. In this short video, I'm going to suggest something a little bit trappy where if the opponent does know the right moves, we can quickly get a better position. And that is the move knight c3, the Vienna game. Of course, a perfectly natural developing move. And in our game here, we'll be looking at a game between Daniel Vocaturo against Yannick Gazzoli, Tile Tuesday, Blitz on chess.com from 2017, where Vocaturo plays f4, playing an improved King Scambit, but the point being that if Black were to play e takes f4, we can then play the move e5, and this is why it's an improved King's Gambit, because all of these squares are covered by the White Knight and the White Queen. And after Knight J and Knight F3, we have a turbocharged King's Gambit, where we got in the move e5, and we got in the move Knight C3 for free. And with the moves like d4 and Bishop takes f4, we are going to get back our pawn and have a very pleasant advantage here. Now, before I go any further, I do actually want to point out what's against a couple of other moves that Black can play. Because Black could also play a move like Knight C6, for example. And then I find that f4 is a bit less effective in this version, because obviously after e takes f4, we wouldn't have a knight to kick away with e5, which is quite an important point. So I would suggest, instead I would suggest playing very solidly, just a move like g3, and just being carried a bishop, like bishop g2. And it's a very safe serve for white, where we can just play d3, put the knight on e2 and castle short. In such positions, let's say if black just develops naturally, like knight f6 and, you know, say we play knight e2, uh, and we just play this like just for argument's sake and we get this sort of position. And then in such a structure, White's plan is going to be to play moves like h3 and king h2. And the reason we play these kind of moves is so that, well, after king h2, we're ready to go f4, getting the pawn side by side and going for the pawn storm. Obviously, there are more subtleties to this and certainly there are other moves that Black would also play uh, as well. You know, there are lines where you can try to avoid castling and go h5, h4, and you might want to put the knight on f3 if they try something like that instead. But okay, it's a pretty safe setup that will definitely get you into the game with a solid enough position. And so at least I know that I've found a little bit unpleasant to face with black in the past. And if they play bishop c5 instead, they kind of like the idea of going knight f3. And if they do play d6, then I think knight a4 is, well, quite a nice move to go after their bishop pair and get a bit of a pull that way. Or if they go knight c6, then there's a fun little fork trick so, those who don't know the fork trick, there's a good chance to pause the video and see if you can find the answer. And while you're doing that, don't forget to smash that like button to learn how to beat more of these chess openings. So, the answer is that the move knight e5 is the key. And the reason it's called the fork trick, guys, is that after knight takes e5 and d4, well, although we sacrifice the piece, you know, maybe our probably think, you know, what's this guy doing giving us a free piece? But actually, we're the ones who have Christmas for us because... Bishop takes d4 is met with queen takes d4. And then we've got the bishop pair advantage, the lead in development, and a better central control. You know, it's like a sort of Thanksgiving feast for white here. Or if they play bishop d6, again, you just take your piece back. And although it's not as winning as the other line, still with the lead in development and your space advantage, well, you're going to kick away this bishop at some good moment. Again, nice initiative that way. Well, the game saw knight f6, f4. I mean, if they play a move like d6, again, you're just kind of getting an improved king's gambit. Where an approach like, let's say, bishop c4, castles d3, is very easy for white to play. For example, bishop c4. Uh, of course, this is perhaps not sorry, the objectively best way to play. You know, there are definitely other approaches where you can try to punish their move order. But this is a basic setup with castles f5 and going for the king's high attack. That does tend to work pretty well. Or at least it's playable in most of the cases. If you want to fight for a bigger advantage, I would say that probably to move bishop b5. And pinning the knight is probably more critical, but I'll leave that for the stronger players to explore in their own time if they're so inclined. Well, the game saw d5 instead, and this actually is a very important counter-attacking move. If black doesn't play d5, I think that black is just significantly worse here. Uh, to, it's very important, he hits back in the center. So after fe5, the black can go knight e4. And here's where I have a tricky little surprise weapon I actually have covered on chess.com in the past on my blog. And that is the move of queen f3. This move is a favorite of the French player Maxime Lagarde, you know, another Max as it were. And his idea is basically that after knight takes c3, he likes to take back with a d-pawn, the same way that Focaturo did in this game, just clearing away for bishop f4 and getting a very fast queenside castling, and then the rook on d1 is also going to pressure that d5-pawn. It's worth pointing out for the sake of objectivity that, of course, when I say how to beat e4, e5, this is referring to how to punish the most common moves that you are going to face at the lower levels of play, 
Of course, if Black knows what he's doing, he'll probably play a move like F5 instead, which is simply a very solid move. You know, after D3, for example, to kick the knight away from its post on E4. You know, if Black knows the move of D4, he does get a very good position here. And, well, I have to be honest and say that Black is absolutely fine in this case. At the same time, I find in my own experience that F5 is quite a rare move. Even strong, most strong players don't know about this F5 move. Like, I didn't know about it until I, you know, was doing a lot of research on this line a while back. So it's definitely a little bit of a secret line that, you know, you can certainly whisper into a grandmaster's ear to show off your supreme knowledge. But okay, these strokes aside, I will add also knight c6 is also a decent move. But still, bishop b5 and, you know, the pin on knight does, you know, give you something to work with here. Even though, again, objectively, black should be doing fine. Well, we had knight takes c3, d takes c3. I mean, it always said it feels fun to be able to take chapter away for a sense. Like, yeah, I'm a smart guy. I'm not just recapturing toward the center like my first chess coach told me to do. But I know the exceptions. Okay, the game saw bishop to e6. Uh, actually, there's one fun little trap I want to share with you, which is if they play the move c5 instead, then still we can play the same setup. And actually, it works a lot better because... What you're going to see some places they're going to think, okay, this guy's just a beginner, like bring his queen out early. So I'm just going to take the space and win. Unfortunately, actually what happens is they take the space and they lose. Because after bishop b6, we now have a very powerful move to use that pin on the d file. And congratulations if you managed to come up with this move, by the way. Uh, the answer is, a little drum roll here for the suspense, the move bishop to c4. And with bishop c4, we're using that pin on the queen, on the pawn, so that if they take our bishop, we snap off their queen. And if they try to defend that pawn with knight e7, well now their bishop and rook are all gummed up. And after a move like either knight h3 or even bishop to b5, knight c6 and c4, well we kind of see that this pin is very unpleasant for black, where either he's going to lose cd5, which is just horrible, or he goes d4 and then bishop takes c6 and, well, white wins a pawn and still has a very good position as such to boot. In fact, this is how the player Maxim Le Guy mentioned before, he actually won the 2019 French Championship against Laurent Fresnay in a big final by using this exact opening trap that I've shown you. So if you can win your French Championship title, well, maybe you'll also become a champion your own way by playing this line against an unsuspecting opponent. Uh, and also, Fresnay, keep in mind, he's like a 2650 GM, so it's not like there's just beginners falling for these traps I'm showing you. All right, let's see the game between Vokturo Gazzoli, where Black played the more solid move, Bishop E6. White continued to play Bishop to F4. And then after knight d7, just played long castles here. Uh, if you do want to stop black playing his bishop out, you can also consider playing queen g3. At an earlier stage, just make it hard for black to help the king's side. It also does allow you to kind of avoid some moves like g5, which... Okay, the computer likes g5, but it takes a lot of guts to play a move like that. Because in that case, the black king is going to really struggle to find a safe post. And you know, even a pawn sack like bishop d2, and just sacking the pawn, but getting that active play like knight f3... Well, we certainly get good practical chances here, even though objectively black should still be doing quite okay. Well, after c6, this was the move that black played, and I think this is the start of where things went just slightly wrong for him. Because if you don't play e g5, it's somehow very hard for black to actually challenge that e5 pawn. You know, keep in mind we do have a space advantage here, and we do have quite easy development with our pieces for the next moves. Black played the move bishop c5, which I do think is a mistake, because after knight to d4... Well, the bishop just doesn't really do that much on c5 when it's blocked by the knight. And also, once we get a bishop on d3, we can really think about moves like knight e6 and queen h5, attacking the king on e8 or the king on g8, and just provoking some weaknesses in the, their position. Like, once you get that momentum, like, once you're just getting fret after fret after fret, it's kind of like a boxing match where they're always on defense and can't strike a blow back at you. Well, black played bishop takes d4, and well, white side to take back with the pawn, and you can see now that white has got everything that a technical chess player or positional player dreams of. The positional chess player likes to calmly nurse their space advantage, you know, nurse their bishop pair advantage as well, and say, well, I'm the accountant, I'm just going to accumulate assets until I can dash in for the big payday at the end. And that's indeed what Vokuturo does in this game to perfection. Well, not to perfection, but certainly very, very well, given he is a grandmaster after all. So queen a5, king b1, you know, very often king b1 is a very useful move after you've castled long to make sure that your pawns are all protected by the king. Uh, so we had castles long by black as well, bishop to d3, and black decides to go for a very passive strategy. He could have considered going c5 and trying to play more actively, but that does also open up the black king, so it's not without its cons as well. Well, we had rook df8, and now queen g3, a nice move just to 
try to provoke a weakness like G6. And now we see that basically Black has got nearly all of the pawns on the light squares, which means that now his dark squares are like Swiss cheese. And after the move C3, White's built a very solid pawn chain, just not giving Black any kind of meaningful counterplay. Black played H6, trying to stop the White Bishop coming in somehow. But it's a little bit for nothing, because after Rook HF1, what we might notice here is that the pawn on H7 is actually a backward pawn, meaning that the other pawns have moved ahead of it. And Black's not really in a position to gain a move like F6, because now this G6 pawn is hanging, which shows why playing at H6 move didn't come, you know, without rent, as in that sense. So after Rook Queen to D8, well, White played H4. And it's one thing you know Grandmasters often do, so they're just going to stop the opponent's counterplay, like not even letting Black get in a G5 move and just taking squares from the opponent's pieces. Black went Queen E7, White brought the bishop back to C1, clearing that open file for the Rook. We had King B8, Rook F1. And at this point, well, Ghazali tried to go for a fortress, but Vokotoro doesn't believe in fortresses. We had Rook DF1, A6, and... I mean, just look at Alikin's gun here after the move Queen to F2. We're going to notice that the Queen is behind the Rook, so that it gives a lot more pressure on the pawn. Now, somebody is probably going to think, but Max has an even better version of Alikin's gun, where you can play Rook to F3... And then try to play like the other queen back. And that's true, you could also try for something like this potentially. Or even do it this way, like with this rook and in this sort of fashion. To try to clear the way for the bishop. Anyway, we had queen to f2. And black played king a7. I mean, I think the reason that black lost the game is he never really found the way to break out. I think that move like g5 and c5 is what you really need to be playing if you want to try and turn the trend of the game. You're not going to survive just sitting passively the whole game. Especially in blitz chess. So after king a7, white played the move b3, which actually is a very good positional move. After king a8, white now played the move of a4. And the idea of a4 is basically to clear the way for bishop a3, because the bishop is going to be incredibly strong on that diagonal. I do think that objectively speaking, white probably could have played this a bit better, where it might have been worth playing the move rook f3 first, just making sure that g5 is not coming with tempo. You know, it would give us time to play a move like h5 and just simply fix the whole king side in our favour. Because again, if black does play a move like f6, well, I mean, you just take it. You've got everything covered. You know, you're defending it three times and black's only attacking it three times. So the pawn will be safe there for white. Instead, we had a4. Black went c5. And now bishop a3 and We see that this pin is extremely debilitating for black. The knight is tied up. The bishop is tied up. The queen is tied up. I mean, black really is in a straight jacket at this point. And again, I think that you have to play g5 as black if you have any chance of getting out of the straight jacket. Instead, Black played Rook C8, and this is where Vokturo showed his tactical vision and found a nice little combination that basically, you know, strategically wins the game. So, guys, can you find a move that White plays played in this position? And, well, while you're pausing the video and coming with the answer, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with more of my chess videos. Alright, well done if you found the Grand Masterly move, Rook takes F7. Where your know, grandmaster is often known for be sacrificing material only when it works, unless your name is Mikhail Tal. And well, after bishop takes and queen takes, we see that black is just facing all kinds of problems here. Like if you were to try to defend the queen, for example, say you well say you trade the queens. In that case, there's rook f7, and this guy's under attack. This guy's under attack. This guy's under attack as well. And I mean the bishop's just raking the board at this point. After rook h8, you could even push that pawn up to e6. And then after knight b8, bishop takes c5. I mean, look at this past pawn. It's just an absolute monster. When it gets that 7th rank, the bishop's going to come in to support the queening. And it's just all over for black at this stage. The move in the game was not a big improvement. He tried queen d8, but then white played e6. You know, even spurning the automatic taking the pawn on d5. Which is probably even better. But, okay, what white did is still easily good enough. Black realized that again, knight b8 and bishop takes c5. It's pretty thankless. Again, the e-pawn is just an absolute monster. And black is in no position really to cover it with the rooks here. Like if queen h or even e7. And well we can say well I'm just going to take your pawns. Queen my pawn and you know, say gg afterwards. The game saw cd4 instead. Like black sort of desperately try to get counterplay. But after e takes d7. Rook takes c3. And now bishop c2. Well it all comes to nothing for black. The d pawn is just too much of a monster. The game ended d3. Bishop to d1. Queen to b6. White went yum yums with queen d5, defending and also preparing an attack. Rook d8 was played. White played move rook f8, removing the one piece blocking the promotion of the queen, the pawn to a queen. We had d2, 
captures, captures, and now Bishop E7, a nice little tactic to ensure that our pawn is going to get a home run. And after Rook C1 and King A2, given that White is about to Queen and just collect the harvest, you know, Queen takes E7, D8 equals Queen, you know, this is one way that the game could have ended, you know, White just collecting and, you know, it's a position where you would beat me if you were playing as White against me. And so Black resigned at this point. So there you are, quite a fun game. Now you can see how to beat E4, E5. For those of you who need a reminder, basically it's by playing the move knight to c3 and then being knight f6 with f4 and going for this Vienna gamble with that early queen to f3 if d5. With these ideas, I think that playing against one was a1 below 2000, you get very easy play and very good chance of obtaining advantage. So good luck in your games. Do remember to leave a comment below with your thoughts. You know, like and subscribe to show your support. And I will see you guys in the next training video on how to beat that next chess opening.